my name is Julia Bauer. I'm a master student of integrated water management at the University of Queensland in Brisbane with the International Water Centre. And I want to introduce my idea of community drone-led agriculture practices. Uh, during my last month, I was working in Cambodia assessing the health impact of a past wash projects. Those projects were community-led total sanitation projects with a combination in flood mitigation. And so during these projects, diarrhea and waterborne diseases were reduced a lot, but more severe di diseases became apparent. So what happened? They installed um, yeah, latrines to improve uh, the sanitation situation, but also due to the um, due to the flooding seasons, they installed canals and household ponds to um, ease up irrigation for dry season cropping and give them access to domestic water closer to the house. And so this water is used for cooking, washing, bathing, cleaning. And the canals are also a good new income source as they have a lot of fish which can be sold or just eaten at the household level. But even though they use fishing now for income, the main income is still rice cropping. And dry season cropping is a really big thing as well because the dry season is becoming longer and longer. So to enhance the dry season yield, they are using a lot of pesticide and fertilizer, which gives up five times the yield from compared to the wet season, which is a lot. And um, these pesticides and fertilizer come in unlabeled bottles from Vietnam and Thailand and are very cheap. So it's a very easy thing to increase the income. But of course, after the application, the pesticide and fertilizer gets washed in the canal or and finally in the ponds of the people. And so they have direct impact from this. It's going on the skin from washing, it's going inside from eating the fish from the canal. And yeah, sometimes the people drink it even because it's um, introduced that boiling can remove things and makes the water safe. But for pesticide and fertilizer and chemicals in general, this is not the case that boiling can remove that. So people get like really highly affected. And there are a lot of yeah new sustainable practices, projects in this area, but they have just a very slow progress because it introduced a complete new thing and stepping away from this high yield and dry season is of course like an economical thing that people don't want to have. Um, yeah, so my idea is stepping away from this and just assisting with existing behaviors by introducing drones. So there's an Australian company called Protero that is already doing weed recognition through aerial imagery. So I thought as rice, the color of the rice field is very depending on um, on the chemicals applied, you can see like the peop the, the rice field gets a very unnatural greenery if there's too much chemical on it. If if we could fly with a drone over these fields and we can recognize the areas where the color is changed too much, um, you can um, just I mean change the perspective of the farmers who are doing it and also use it as an educational tool. So it can be easy like a flip chart saying this color means this amount of a pesticide or this amount is like you can reduce it by that and still get the same yield. So um, yeah, I want to introduce drone drones as a tool to educate and also reduce the amount of pesticide and fertilizer applied. And this would finally restore the eco ecological health and um, also like, yeah, in the end, the health of the people around as like there's a reduced amount of chemicals. And finally, the wash outcomes are not hindered because we had like a very low satisfaction rate of the people from the latrines. So yeah, I want to introduce drones as an assisting and educational tool for better agricultural practices. Thank you.